Hi, I'm Tina from Prep 101. In this video, we're going to talk about dot product and cross product. We're going to use the dot and cross product when we calculate cos theta, distance, volume, and area. And all of those will be tested on your first exam. Okay, let's get started. So dot product for u and v, it's denoted by u with a little dot between them, so that's u dot v. And it's found by finding the sum of the products of the corresponding components of u and v. So what we do is we have u is u1, u2, u3, and v is v1, v2, v3, and we multiply the corresponding components. So u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 plus u3 times v3. And because you're adding up all of these numbers, we know that dot product is always going to be a scalar or a number. Whereas cross product is always a vector. So if we go back to some of the vectors that we've been using here. So for number one, we've got vector u is negative one, negative two, three. And vector v is negative two, negative one, one. So let's go ahead and find u dot v for those vectors we've been using. So we do first component times first, so negative one times negative two, plus second times second, negative two times negative one, plus third times third, so three times one. And of course you can you know, do it right away once you get used to it. Once you get good at dot product, you don't have to write all of this out. So negative times negative is positive two, negative two times negative one, positive two, and three. So in this case, we get two plus two plus three would be seven is our dot product. Dot product can be negative or it can be positive. It just depends on the vectors. So if we do v dot w, so v is negative two, negative one, one, and w is four, negative one, negative two. So hit pause and work out your dot product and see what you get here. So we do first times first, negative two times four plus second times second, negative one times negative one plus third times third, one times negative two. And so we get here negative eight plus one minus two. So negative nine should be your final answer there. Okay, properties of dot product. So the first property is that we can dot in any order. And this one is quite often on the exam, that u dot v and v dot u are the same. And that's because, of course, if we multiply one times two, or we multiply two times one, one times two and two times one, the order doesn't matter. We still get the same answer. Number two says if we dot with all zeros, we get the answer zero, right? So that makes sense. If we take one, two, three, and we dot with the zero vector, with the, which is all zeros, we're going to get one times zero plus two times zero plus three times zero, which is the answer zero. Number three is not an obvious one. So if I had to check this on the exam, u dot u equals the magnitude of u squared. So I know that this is true because it's a property, but if I've forgotten on my exam, what would I do? I would do a left side, right side check, and I would just make up a vector u, something random, not the zero vector, not all ones. So something like maybe, you know, one, negative one, two. There's my vector u. And I would check the left side and the right side. So the left side says, do u dot itself. So I would take one, negative one, two, dot one, negative one, two. And I would see what I get. So my dot product there, I get one times one, plus negative one times negative one, plus two times two. And so I have one plus one plus uh, four, and so I would get uh, six. And then if I do the right side, I have magnitude of u squared. So what's the magnitude of u? Well, whatever I get, I know I have to square it because we have magnitude of u squared. So u, we have one squared, plus negative one squared plus two squared. So under our root, one plus one plus four, and then square the root. And so we get four plus one plus one is root six here, but root six squared is root six times root six, which is six. 
and the left side equals the right side, and so I know that property is true. If I get it to be true for one random example, then chances are it's true. If it doesn't work, then chances are it's a property that's not actually a property. So if it says which the following are true or always true, then you would say it was false if it didn't work for your example. Number four and five. Number four, sometimes they'll do something like 5u.v. And so you can put the five in with the u. You can say 5u and then dot with v, or you can put the five in with the v. Now remember, it's not a plus sign between them, so it's not like you have two fives. So you can't do 5u.5v. That's a common mistake. Either the five is out in front or with the u or with the v, but it can't be in both. And property number five here is just distributing the u dot v plus u dot w. So those are some properties that we will talk about um, in detail during prep and we'll do questions during prep that say which of the following are true or which of the following are false, which are common on exams. So next we're gonna get into cross product. So cross product, a couple of notes for you to write down. Cross product is only defined in R3. So if they ask you a property question and they are talking in Rn or in R2 or in R4, then anything with cross product would be undefined, okay? It's only defined in R3. And you can also write down that cross product is always a vector. It is never a scalar, right? It's a scalar for dot product or a number for dot product, but cross is always a vector. So our formula for cross product, we're gonna do the easy method. So some of you would have learned it in high school. We're going to multiply down and write minus, and then we're going to multiply down and left. So I'm going to give you two vectors and show you the cross product, and then we're going to practice it. So vector u, I have 1, 2, 1, and vector v, negative 1, negative 2, 5. So these are just two random vectors here. So what we do to do the cross product is we write out, if we want u cross v, we write out u twice, and then right below it, we write out, try and line them up, we write out v twice. And then I always remember from the formula, cross product, so I say cross out each end before you start. Now, we're gonna be multiplying down and right, minus multiplying down and left. So remember the formula is subtract. So down and right here, two times five is 10, minus from the formula, one times negative two is negative two. So it's 10 minus negative two, which would be 10 plus two. The middle component, multiply down and right, minus, multiply down and left. One times negative one is negative one, minus, one times five is five. And then our third component, multiply down and right, minus, multiply down and left. One times negative two is negative two, minus from the formula. Two times negative one is negative two, so subtract a negative turns into a plus. So in this case, u cross v would be 12, negative six, and zero. And that would be our cross product. Okay, let's try another one. So number two here, we've got Vector u is 3 and negative 2, negative 1. Vector v is negative 1, negative 1, 2. And again, we're going to find u cross v. So we write out vector u twice, 3, negative 2, negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1, 2. And what do we do first here? Well, cross product, so we want to cross out the ends, and then we're going to multiply down and right, minus multiply down and left. Okay, so what do we get for u cross v? So first, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, minus, now be careful, we've got a minus in the formula, and then we've got a negative times a negative, which is actually a positive. So this minus is from the formula, and then negative times negative is positive 1. So that one stays subtract. In the middle component, negative one times negative one is one, minus three times two is six. And in the final component, three times negative one is negative three, 
minus negative times negative is positive 2. So u cross v here is negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. Sort of funny when you pick up random vectors to get that answer. But that's our answer for u cross v. Okay, let's do one more. And this time I'm going to ask you to do v cross u. So here, vector u is 4, 2, negative 1. And vector v is negative 1, 2, 3. So think about what might you do differently if you wanted v cross u instead of u cross v here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the order. For v cross u, we're going to start with vector v. And then we'll put vector u below it. So cross at each end. And I want you to hit pause here, and I want you to work it out and see if you can get it. So down and right, minus down and left, multiply down and right, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 3 times 2 is 6, middle component, 3 times 4 is 12, minus from the formula, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, so that stays subtract, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, minus 2 times 4 is 8. And so V cross U is negative 8, 11, negative 10. Now, let's say you were looking over your exam. I always tell students, look at the question that you were asked before you go on to the next question. And ask yourself, did I answer the right question? Did I finish it? And let's say you notice that you did U cross V and you needed V cross U. Would you have to start again? The answer is no. U cross V and V cross U are just opposites. So if we wanted u cross v and we accidentally did v cross u, we could just switch all of our signs and that would be u cross v. So keep that in mind just in case. Okay, now we're going to do something called orthogonal. So orthogonal, the cross product is orthogonal to both vectors. So anytime they say find a vector orthogonal, which means perpendicular, So orthogonal and perpendicular mean the same thing. So find a vector orthogonal to two vectors. That means you're going to do the cross product. So here, find a vector orthogonal to u, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, negative 6 fifths, and v, negative 1 fifth, negative 3, 2. So vector orthogonal to both, that would be the cross product. Now, I've given you fractions here, not to be obnoxious, but because there's been a few times on the exam where they give fractions, so I want you to practice it just in case, okay? So we write out 1 fifth, 2 fifths, negative 6 fifths, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, negative 6 fifths, and then below we write out vector v, negative 1 fifth, negative 3, 2, negative 1 fifth, negative 3, 2. And just make sure you've got all the negatives and everything before you start. I'd hate to copy the question down wrong and get it wrong for that. So we cross out each end, and then we're going to do cross product with fractions here. I know, lovely, right? So these are all over 1, so keep that in mind. Sometimes people get confused with multiplying. So 2 fifths times 2 over 1, we multiply the tops, 2 times 2 is 4, over the bottoms, 5 times 1 is 5. So here, in our u cross v, we're going to get 4 over 5. So that's down and right. Minus, negative times negative is positive, so the minus is from the formula. 6 times 3, 18, over 5 times 1, 5. And then we go and do our middle component. Multiply down and right, minus multiply down and left. So negative times negative is going to be a positive answer. Top, 6 times 1 is 6. Over bottom, 5 times 5 is 25. Minus the top, 1 times 2 is 2. Over the bottom, 5 times 1 is 5. And here, the last component, down and right, minus down and left. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Over 5 times 1 is 5 minus, positive times the negative will be a negative, so subtract a negative turns into a positive. 2 times 1 is 2, over 5 times 5 is 25. We've got to do, let's see, 4 fifths minus 18 fifths is already 
looks like already the same denominator, so we can just do that, negative 14 over 5. And then the middle one, we need to get it to a common denominator. So we can leave the 6 25ths, and we need to convert this to over 25. So we times this by 5, and times the top by 5. So 2 times 5 would be 10. And then this one, we've got to get it over 25. This one's already over 25, so we can leave the 2 over 25 alone. And here we multiply by 5, multiply the top by 5. And so our answer would be negative 14 over 5. 6 minus 10 is negative 4 over 25. And negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13 over 25. And that would be our answer for the cross product. Okay, and one more thing I'm going to show you is just properties of cross products that are common come up on the exam. So here are some properties of cross product. So u cross v and v cross u, we talked about this. They're not the same, they're opposite signs. So u cross v is negative v cross u. That one is the most popular one that we see on exams. This one, u cross v plus w in brackets, you kind of just think of distributing the u with the cross product. Same thing here, think of distributing the w. Now number four, sometimes they'll put that on an exam. So if we have something like two u cross v, you could say that's two u cross v. You could also say it's u cross two v. So you can put the two with either the u or v, similar to when we did for dot product. And they can also give you, you know, two times three and put it into the cross product. So we'll see that in a minute. Number five and number six are also common on exams. Number five says any vector cross the zero vector is the zero vector. And number six says any vector cross itself is the zero vector. So both of those are fairly common on exams. So if I give you a question and I ask you which of the following are true based on the properties we just did here. So 2u cross 3v is 6u cross v. Is this true or false? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. That works. And u cross v hasn't switched order, so it's still u cross v. So this is true. 2 times 3 is 6, and u cross v equals u cross v. This one, 2u cross 3v, is 6v cross u. So I switched the order here. So 2 times 3 is 6. That's true. But u cross v does not equal v cross u. This is false. If I wanted it to be true, I would have to say 2u cross 3v is negative 6v cross u. And make sure that negative is in there, and then it would be true. Okay, and one more thing to mention to you are something called the unit vectors. So in R2, the unit vectors are i is 1, 0, and j is 0, 1. So those are called the unit vectors. In R3, the unit vectors are i, j, and k. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And so sometimes they'll say, you know, what's the vector 5i minus 3j plus 2k, for instance. Or they might make you do the magnitude of it. So if we want 5i minus 3j plus 2k, if you multiply 5 by 1, 0, 0, you're only going to get a 5 in the first spot. And if you multiply negative 3 times this j, you're only going to get a negative 3 in the middle spot. And a 2 times k only gives a 2 at the final spot, the third component. So 5i just means a 5 in the first spot. Negative 3j means a negative 3 in the middle component. And 2k means a 2 at the end. So this is your i, j, and k. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, see more videos in this playlist. Don't forget to join the Facebook Study Hub. Use the link in the video description box. Also, I hope to see you at my prep sessions where I'll show you lots of tricks and how to ace your exam. I'll go through every problem that you need to solve and you'll solve them with confidence by the end of my prep sessions. Many of our prep sessions are free, so go to prep101.com now for more details and to sign up. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.